I'm Jaya, Jaya Papaya, and welcome back to Maker Mondays. Today, I decided to kickstart an old series I did on my Instagram about three years ago. I'm in a Discord for the Webtoon Space Boy, and one of the members was requesting help with drawing hair and understanding it in a 3D space. As I was trying to help them along with another member, it reminded me about how much I loved character design and a lot of little ways that you can help kind of enhance your character design, but from a more rookie standpoint. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Now, just disclaimer, I never went to art school. I'm not an art school student. I'm quite the opposite. I'm in healthcare. This is just stuff from my own personal experiences and what works for me. So if you like this advice, then please use it. And if it's not for you, that's totally fine. I appreciate you watching anyways. So with that being said, I'm going to draw a couple examples. Let's get into it. So one of the main ways I work on hairstyles is by thinking about ethnic traits and other phenotypes that may affect your hair. For this example, I'm drawing my OC Storm Dragon, who is from Seychelles, meaning that she's African. She's a queen. She's known for being a warrior, having lightning powers, and albinism. Because of this, her hair is going to look different from her other peers. It's not as coily or as curly as other Afro women in this series because in this universe, albinism makes your hair a bit more straight. Because of her lightning powers, it causes it to be more static and more out of the place, but then again, also smooth looking due to her royalty. Next is my Polynesian OC, Ahimi Puropia. She is known for being a public figure in many different ways. She is an active military guard, she worked for the government, she was a prima ballerina, and she's an overall celebrity as she likes to stream and show off. Because of how active she is and how consistently she's in the limelight, she likes to smooth her hair back so that way it's functional, but also gives off that air of professionality in her day-to-day -day life. Plus, just a little tidbit to fill in dead space, uh, I made her hair especially curly not only because of her polynesian but because she's a firebender and her fire tends to curl. Next is Ruby Greystone. Now, Ruby is Ahimi's co-worker and she also worked for the government. However, while she's working for the government, she is earning her education degree in graduate school. So she's typically really stressed and tends not to worry about her hair and just throws it back into a ponytail. I also mentioned her being trans in this case because there is a very direct correlation between her being trans and the way she maintains her hair. Those are spoilers, so I won't go into details, but those are also details you can consider with making characters and character development. All right, so we've got our three women, our three models to show off different hairstyles. Now I'm going to explain to you one of the ways you can kind of dissect how hair looks by studying the flow of each person. I'm gonna start with Storm Dragon. Here I've outlined her scalp. This is where the roots of her hair start and where they will divulge from. As mentioned before, the flow of her hair is meant to correlate with her personality traits. See how they all curl and therefore they all look somewhat coordinated. However, each arrow goes in its own random direction despite being on the left or the right or even behind her. They all create their own different patterns, even though they all smooth from her hairline and fly back out in their own directions. Now I put Ahimi and Strobe Dragon next to each other to compare just the differences between their curls. Ahimi has wavy hair as opposed to coiled hair, which Storm Dragon would have if not for her albinism. Because Ahimi is Pacific Islander, her hair is wavy, therefore it can wrap around in a straight-like manner, but then curls. As you can see here, it wraps around her head, and then once it is released, it then becomes a wavy pattern, cascading down her face. Then you have Ruby. Ruby just has straight follicles and therefore her hair doesn't wrap around in any particular fashion except for the stress of say her hair tie and the ponytail. So as you can see her bangs go straight forward and straight down her sideburns. The hair is being pulled back into the ponytail and then being released in just any random fashion simply because her hair isn't necessarily like brushed or combed when she puts it into a ponytail. It's just there for functionality. A really good way to study character design is to remove the component you're studying from the rest of the character. So in this case, I've kind of cleared out the characters themselves so you can focus on the flow of their hair. When you look at Storm Dragons, you can see just how uncoordinated her strands are. I call them scattered because they go every which way, which helps kind of convey her very like on the edge, like compulsive personality that you would see in the comics. As for Ahimi, I would say her hair is patterned. It goes in a very simplistic spiral pattern because she's doing her best to look presentable and seem very professional and classy due to her ballet background. And as for Ruby, I don't like using the term unruly because I feel like it's very derogatory towards a lot of hair terms, but that's kind of the best way I could see it. And then like very shaken because again, she wasn't putting effort into her hair. It's just me get ready to go and you can see that Ruby is like that as a person she's not there for semantics or appearances she's there to get things done and this therefore helps heighten the character development and character design throughout your stories 
Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing with three very recognizable characters. Deku from My Hero Academia, Pinkie Pie from Equestria Girls, and Maka from Soul Eater. We're going to start with Deku's hair. Here, this is where the scalp can be assumed to be, as this is where the sprouts of his little broccoli head begin to sprout. But notice how his hair is in a very similar pattern to Storm Dragon's, as it just kind of goes out everywhere. It's very floofy. It's what he's known for. And so if you keep watching, you'll see how they all just sort of they have a decent amount of form in the sense that his hair is splitting from left to right, but Sprout Rise, it's just doing whatever. Next we have Pinkie Pie from Equestria Girls. It's easier to see where the scout line may be as they kind of put in a little incision for where her mane was as a pony, but her hair is just a whole lot of coils. It's very much curly. As you can see the, the physical loops in her hair and it just goes down her back into a simple arrow, but there are just swirls with those arrows until they coil up into her mock tail. Then you have Maka. Maka's hair is even more simple as it's just bangs and two twin tails. Her bangs are straight, they just go across her head. Of course, they're tilted a bit for the more dynamic pose of her holding soul. And then you have her ponytails on the side and that's it. So when we look at these three different shapes, we can see just how different they are. Deku's hair is more chaotic and more scattered, like I mentioned before. You can tell that even though he's very, very smart, he's a bit more out there, he's very energetic, likes to move on. Pinky's hair is very curly, which may show someone who's bubbly or gregarious, just like Pinky is. Now I want to specify, the difference between curly and wavy is that curly coils. Wavy does not physically curl, it literally makes a wave. And so therefore, that is the biggest difference. Of course, ethnicity and race comes into that later, but just so you know, Pinky's hair is curly, not wavy. And finally, Maka. Maka is just a bunch of simple, straight arrows. Her hair just goes straight down, which fits her character because Maka is known for being straightforward and serious when need be. This leads me to my second method of creating design and hairstyles in this case, which is designing based off of adjectives and characteristics as opposed to phenotypes. So for this demonstration, I decided to create the exact same person, but in three different modes or personalities, if you will. We have the strict executive, we have the fun-loving gregarious one, and we have the shy girl. Notice how their outfits are all the exact same. They're all wearing skirts, a top of a jacket. They all have earrings. They have glasses, except for the middle one, because I forgot. And they're all the exact same, but we're going to focus on the way that their hair can be different. So for the strict one, I wanted to emphasize on the more angles and edges of her hair. So I made sure that the wavy, straight, and afro version or curly version all reflected that. The wavy hair would be a bit of a contradiction, so she puts it in a bun to remain in control. The straight one would be like a techno haircut, showing that she's still in power and still very edgy. And as for the afro or coiled one, she puts it in a box with shaved edges to still give it that angular illusion. Then for the gregarious one, that one it has a bit more leeway because we want to make her look welcoming and very open. The wavy version has open bangs and a free-flowing ponytail. Then you have the straight version where I gave her longer front bangs that are dyed and a more frayed outer backside. I don't know what you would call that properly, just to give it a bit more like that punk kind of fun flair. And then the afro girl just gets afro puffs because they're cute and who doesn't love afro puffs? Finally, we have the shy girl. The vibe I wanted to go for is that she'd probably cover up part of her face with her hair as a way to like divert attention from her because she doesn't want to talk to you so don't talk to her. For the straight hair, I gave her a simple like cover up the eye and two clips on the side for a bit of acceleration, ex accessories. As for the upper one, I struggled because I had a reference, but I gave her coils because I feel like she would have enough volume to cover up part of her face, but it would still look kind of cute and fairly nice. Then finally, you have the wavy hairstyle where I gave her a shaved side, but enough wavy hair to cover up the other side of her face. And that's really it. That's all I ever do when it comes to drawing hairstyles. I just look at my surroundings. What are the criteria I need for this character? And then what is this character like? How can I accentuate their already predetermined features? Another way you could do this is with accessories. For example, this is a fairy old OC of mine that is of royal descent. And therefore she puts her hair up in very dignified styles and she wears her family comb or other things like embedded jewelry to kind of accentuate her hair. That's one way you can make your hairstyles pop. With other pre-existing characters like Xin Yang from Genshin Impact, you can notice that she has spikes when holding up her puffs. This kind of helps show off that she's very likely Blasian, but also that she's a rock star and it helps kind of accentuate the extra parts of a person's character. It can help with your own character design. 
So I hope this video was helpful and that you'll take the time to sort of design your own hair, whether it means just adding a simple little bow or something as extreme as a whole crown. But regardless, have fun and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.